Negative Poisson's Ratio, Oxetic Materials. We have all heard of Poisson's ratio before in our classes and have used it in various equations through our academics. Each time we have done this, Poisson's ratio has been a positive number provided by a professor, book, or data sheet. Is there such thing as a negative or zero Poisson's ratio and how would that work? Let's give everyone a quick refresher. Poisson's ratio is the ratio of the proportional decrease in a lateral measurement to the proportional increase in length in a sample of material that is elastically stretched. As you can see on the left picture, when the specimen is pulled, it increases in length but decreases in width. Now on the right is an example of a material with negative Poisson's ratio. When pulled axially, it increases in length as well as in width. This is an example of a positive Poisson's ratio material. As you can see, when the material is pulled axially, the hexagons flatten down and the sheet's lateral dimension is decreased. Lacrosse strings can be used in an example of zero Poisson's ratio material. When the material is pulled axially, it stays the same length in the lateral dimension. This is not a perfectly zero Poisson's ratio, but it is pretty close. Here is what you have all been waiting for. This is a material that has a negative Poisson's ratio. When the material is pulled axially, it increases in its lateral dimension. Let's watch that again. If you look at the professionally filmed video against the extremely expensive backdrop, you can see the bow ties form into rectangles, expanding the material in both directions. Typical negative Poisson's ratio materials can be created out of low density foams and rubbers just by manipulating the geometry in which they are formed. They are especially applicable when creating pads and shock absorbers because they can form into dome shapes, unlike other materials. As you can see in the picture on the right, it conforms to the knee rather than bowing outwards. Negative Poisson's ratio materials become more dense upon impact, which allows them to resist further deformation, making them useful for armor applications. These materials are currently used in shoes. While running, a person experiences a lot of stress in the knee and ankle joints. To combat this, shock absorbing materials are used in the sole of the shoe. This new style of Nike shoes utilizes negative Poisson's ratio materials to allow the shoe to expand with the foot as it impacts the ground, resulting in improved comfort for the runner. Here's a little history. Negative Poisson's ratio materials were discovered by a German physicist named Voldemort Voigt in the late 1800s. He published the paper in 1893 on iron pyrite, also known as fool's goat, which has a Poisson's ratio of negative 0.14. However, at that time, no one could explain this phenomena and no one knew what to do with these materials. So the work went unnoticed for almost a century. Research resumed in the 1980s and resulted in some nice shoes. Negative Poisson's ratio materials can be created by cutting material into certain shapes. There are a variety of shapes that can create this effect, such as bow ties or odd triangular patterns. On the micro scale, one can create negative Poisson's ratios by introducing vacancy defects in certain materials such as graphene. Note, these materials do not show the drastic expansion in the lateral direction, but they still do expand. This here is a 50 watt CO2 coherent laser. It is being ran at 60% power and 50% speed. We are cutting 1 16th inch natural rubber into the bow tie structure. As you can see, as the laser cuts, the materials start blowing away because there is a fan. If the laser is touched by the material, then the laser will stop running. The final product shown here was being stretched in the clips of four. The laser cut the hexagon pattern as well with extremely high resolution. That's it, that's all folks.